process control is a subject that overlaps in all of the engineering disciplines. And its objective is to model and predict systems that we are working with so that we can control them. And what I will do in this video is give a basic understanding or a basic explanation of the fundamental terms uh, and vocabulary that we're working with, as well as give uh, a CSTR mixer that is a common uh, or a convenient way of incorporating all these terms of interest and show you how we can derive equations to actually uh, begin to figure out how these variables will evolve over time. And so the first major definition to note are st is state variables. And state variables are anything in your system that evolves over time. So think of temperature, volume, concentration. Uh, and then the next important type of variable that we will uh, consider are our inputs. And there are two types of inputs. We have uh, things called manipulated variables, and these we can control. And so an example of a manipulated variable would be if we had some kind of, in your oven, you can set a temperature and uh, change it at will. So in that case, the manipulated variable would be temperature. And then uh, we also have inputs referred to as disturbance variables, and these are things that we can't control. So externalities um, or other uh, things occurring in your system that we just can't control. So these would be external events such as uh, upstream uh, perturbations that uh, we'll need to take into account in our model if we want to have an accurate representation of what's happening in a reactor. And then the other important definition is outputs. And outputs are a subset of your state variables. The uh, main difference here, though, is that they are measurable state variables uh, and they are exiting your system. So temperature is a very easy quantity to measure. Mass is an easy quantity to measure, but concentration is pretty difficult in practice because we have to run things like GCMS and then wait a few minutes to actually figure out what the concentration is at a given time t. And by that point, uh, your reactor may be at a different concentration. So um, typically, temperature would be a good example of an output that we can readily measure and evolves with time uh, if we're working with transient systems. And another key note I would like to emphasize in process control is a lot of the work that you're going to be doing involves systems that are not operating at steady state. Um, these are transient systems that are evolving with time. The d by dt term, we will almost never be able to set to zero um, because we are interested in seeing how these systems will respond to perturbations and uh, step changes or pulses or impulses in your inputs. And uh, so that's a, a thing to keep in mind as we are learning about process control. And then finally, uh, we have parameters. And uh, the main thing with parameters is they are just constants. And so uh, these are things that are typically things such as uh, specific heat capacities and densities. Uh, and generally in these systems, we'll assume that our species have the same uh, heat capacity or uh, vol um, density just to keep the math simple so we can uh, understand other core concepts while we're uh, going through this. And so what I'll do now that we have uh, some basic terms defined is we're going to look at how a CSTR, uh, which is taking in two streams of fluids uh, and outputting one as it mixes them, we can model that based on uh, fundamental balance equations uh, such as the mass and energy balance. So to draw this system, what we'll have is a two streams entering. Stream one will have a mass flow rate W1, a mass fraction of some component of interest X1, and some temperature T1. And then stream two will have the same variables. And then exiting our system, we will have a mass flow rate W, a temperature T, and a new composition X. Uh, 
and inside the mixer it will be well stirred so we can say that the composition uh, x inside of our system is the same and uh, as well as the temperature of your exit stream is the same as the internal temperature and so the first thing we can or we usually do as chemical engineers is uh, define overall mass balances to begin our equations because ultimately our goal is to figure out how we can model a state variable or an output as a function of time and relate that to an input and uh, through Laplace transforms we can define things called transfer functions and uh, I'll get to this later on but the the key takeaway from that is how sensitive are your outputs to perturbations aka inputs and uh, yes that's where we're heading and so to get to the actual overall mal uh, mass balance, uh, what we'll say is we'll define uh, the total mass in our tank to be M, and we're going to say our uh, tank has some volume, which is a function of time. The cross-sectional area of our tank will have some value AC. AC will be a constant, so we can call AC a parameter if we wanted to. Uh, and then, uh, so our height, therefore, must be evolving in time. And uh, yeah, and so in this problem, I will say that essentially, I'm sorry, temperature will be a function of time. The outlet mole ratio will be a function of time. And then the mass flow rate will also be a function of time. And so this uh, will allude to uh, what some of our inputs can be to actually uh, get this kind of system. And so now go actually finally getting to the uh, overall mass balance, uh, what we'll say is dm dt, total mass of your system with respect to time, is equivalent to d rho v dt. And we can usually make the assumption that density is independent of time, uh, if it's independent of temperature. Uh, and then we will also make note of how volume is equivalent to area of the base ac times the height h. And because we know ac is a constant, uh, we can pull that out as well. So we'll have rho times area of the base times dh dt because height is the only variable here that has a dependence on time. And so this will be the left-hand side of our overall mass balance. And we will let this be equal to the mass flow rate coming in, w1, plus the mass flow rate also coming in from the other stream, w2, and then the mass flow rate w, which is leaving our system. And so this is the first equation that we will define. And uh, when we talk about state space later on, it will be common that we will algebraically isolate these uh, differential terms. And in this case, we would just do it by dividing by uh, everything by rho AC. And so this was an overall mal uh, mass balance. What we do next is, what we can do next is a, a component mole balance or mass balance. And in that case, what we're going to look at is how the mass of some species I is evolving over time. And uh, this would be equivalent to dmxi dt, where xi, uh, I'll just let this be equal to x for the sake of uh, symmetry with the uh, diagram I've drawn. Um, this will be uh, what dmi dt is equal to. And we will also note how, because we have mass as a function of time, as we've just shown uh, in one, uh, our mole or mass fraction is also a function of time. We will need to apply the product rule in this example. And as we'll recall, the definition of product rule is uh, the is this. So we have m times dx dt plus x times dm dt and uh, at this point we would substitute in the definition of uh, dm dt that we have arrived at in equation one and plug in uh, these values and uh, we would algebraically isolate dx dt to evaluate what the left hand side of our component mass balance would be and the right hand side in minus out plus generation uh, would be this. So we would have w1 times x1 plus w2 times x2 and then minus w times x. And so this 
second equation we've just uh, derived is uh, another uh, step in a path that we would take to being able to evaluate how an output is evolving over time. And then a third equation that we're going to turn to commonly uh, will be an energy balance on our system. And in that case, what we typically do are enthalpy balances. And in that case, we look at it like this. So we'd have dH dt. And uh, what we'll call the definition of enthalpy, H is equal to integral from 0 to T of mcp dt. And if we can let cp be independent of temperature, uh, in practice it isn't. There is a dependence, but uh, we uh, can pull that out sometimes. Carrying on with this equation, uh, what we would generally have is something like this. So we'd have mcp dt dt. And just try to write clearly. So this tells us, the left-hand side, what the enthalpy of the tank is as a function, or how it is evolving over time. And what we have next would be the uh, enthalpy coming in from stream one, stream two, as well as exiting. And in that case, we would have W1 times specific enthalpy one, and uh, specific enthalpy is the same thing as enthalpy divided by mass, which would be equivalent to integral from zero to T. So zero in this case would be a reference temperature to some temperature T of CP dt. And if we were analyzing what H1 is, it would be equivalent to zero to T1. And if we were looking at uh, H2, it will be something else. So uh, I will substitute in the definition of H1 into this equation uh, to carry on. So we would have, sorry, we would have in our uh, third equation, some mass flow rate of stream one W1 times stream one's specific enthalpy and this will have units of joules per time. Uh, so W1 times CP times T1 minus zero, and zero is a reference temperature. Commonly we'll let the reference temperature be zero uh, for the sake of simplicity. We would also have stream two coming in with its energy contribution or enthalpy contribution to be specific. And then uh, we will also have some enthalpy leaving our system, W2, I'm sorry, uh, minus W times CP times T minus zero. And uh, another thing to take into account in these kinds of systems that we were analyzing, uh, we can sometimes have heaters present, adding or removing heat from your system. We can also have work occurring. And so in that case, we can take into account the heat that is being added to our system in a variable referred to as Q dot, which has units of joules per second, as well as a value called shaft work. And so shaft work would be something that takes into account the energy or the uh, frictional losses of a propeller that is spinning in your tank to keep it well mixed. Typically we can neglect shaft work. Um, and if our system is adiabatic, we can neglect Q. But for the sake of having a general enthalpy balance, this relationship here is what we arrive at. And so this summarizes the kind of balance equations that we would be working with uh, in a process control class. And the next part is where we actually begin to apply and interpret uh, these models that we have just derived into something referred to as state space in order to take Laplace transforms and linearize them to derive what uh, response an output will have to an input. And I will get to that next. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. Take care.